The silent buildup of plaque in our arteries is a key risk factor for heart disease and strokes. But what if you could reverse this risky buildup with the right diet? Well, in this video, we'll dive into the clinical trials to uncover the best eating pattern for reversing plaque buildup and boosting our heart health. We're going to look at five significant trials, moving from the oldest to the most recent, with a quick overview of what each found. Every study adds a key piece of evidence that helped us achieve the level of understanding that we have today. All of them are randomized controlled trials, which means they're carefully designed to give us high quality results. So how do we know that changing our diet will affect heart disease? Well, in 1990, the Lifestyle Heart Trial was published. The study aim was to see if significant lifestyle changes affected plaque in our arteries after one year. The intervention group ate a low-fat, vegetarian diet. It included fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, egg whites, and non-fat dairy. They also quit smoking, added aerobic exercise, and received stress management training and group support. The control group wasn't asked to make any changes, and all subjects in the trial already had coronary artery disease. There was already significant buildup of plaque in their arteries. Researchers checked the heart's blood vessels using coronary angiography at the beginning and the end of the trial, and here's what they found. 82% of the low-fat group saw the narrowing of their arteries reverse. The average blockage decreased from 40% of the diameter of the blood vessels to 37.8%. When blockages were more severe, so over 50%, the average regression was from 61.1% to 55.8%. Now, this change does look small, but the impact on how well blood can flow is significant. In contrast, the blockages got worse in the control group, rising from an average of 42.7% to 46.1%. And in addition to the reduced plaque volume, those in the low-fat group also saw their symptoms of heart disease improve, so they reported a whopping 91% reduction in the frequency of chest pain, a 41% reduction in how long it would last, and a 28% decrease in how severe it was. The control group, however, had a 165% increased frequency, a 95% rise in duration, and a 39% rise in the severity of their chest pain. The researchers followed up the same group after five years. The plaque volume in the low-fat group continued to shrink, going down from 37.8% seen at the end of the one-year study period to 37.3% at the five-year mark. But in the control group, the number continued to rise, going from 42.3% at year one to 51.9% at year five. So the first study suggests that diet and lifestyle changes can impact our heart health, but it does leave unanswered questions. We don't know how much of the change was due to diet and how much of the change was due to other lifestyle factors. We need more evidence to zero in on the best diet. To help answer these questions, let's look at the next STARS trial published in 1992. Once again, participants already had heart disease, but this time there were three groups. We had the usual care group or the control group. Then we had one group where they were placed on the low-fat diet with increased fiber intake, and then another intervention group that also adopted that diet but took the cholesterol-lowering medications as well. That middle intervention group is just modifying the diet so we can isolate the impact of just that factor. After 39 months, nearly half of the control group had an increase in their plaque volume. Their arteries got even narrower but in contrast, the arteries of those two intervention groups, they widened. Overall, the amount wasn't large, and it was only statistically significant in the group that also had the medication. But cardiovascular events dramatically fell for both of those intervention groups compared to the control. Notice that the number of events is really small though, so we need more data to have much confidence about those implications. But this study, it does seem to suggest that adopting a low-fat diet with added fiber by itself can improve cardiac health, even without the other interventions. Yet notice this, the first study with the diet plus lifestyle changes seemed to have a bigger impact than the diet change alone in that second study. So maybe that second study didn't pick the best possible diet. Can we fill out the rest of the picture with what kind of diet is most helpful? Well, that's where the PREDIMED study in 2013 comes in. It divided subjects at high risk for heart disease into three groups. And at this stage, we know that a low-fat diet is better than a standard diet. So we don't need a group that eats the standard diet. So in this trial, the control group is the low-fat diet. 
One intervention group ate the Mediterranean diet supplemented with extra virgin olive oil, and another group ate the same diet but supplemented with mixed nuts. They used ultrasounds to measure the thickness of the walls in arteries in the neck. The thickness of these walls helps us to see how much plaque is built up in them. Patients were tested at the beginning of the trial and again 2.4 years later. The thickness of the artery wall increased in the low-fat group, but the group that included nuts in their diet saw the average artery wall thickness decrease. There was no significant change though in the olive oil group. So we've got a hint from this data that including unsaturated fats might be a good idea, but again it still needs further investigation. That's where the most recent Cordioprev trial comes in that also examined the Mediterranean diet and it compared it to a low fat one. The study included nearly 1,000 people with heart disease. As in the last study, researchers used ultrasounds to measure the thickness of the walls in the arteries in the neck. They checked at the beginning of the study and again at 5 years and then 7 years. The Mediterranean diet with unsaturated fats decreased the artery wall thickness sharply at 5 years and even more at the 7 year mark. But in the low fat group there was no change. So these last two studies are helping us answer our question about which diet might be most helpful for avoiding plaque and I'm going to draw some specific conclusions about all of that in a moment. But we're first going to have a look at one final study that helps us fill out the picture by looking at a different diet. This diet is called the DASH diet which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. It was created to lower blood pressure but researchers were interested in how it affected plaque. So the DASH diet is rich in fruits vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy products. It avoids saturated fats, cholesterol, starchy foods, and sweets. The study had two groups. One ate the DASH diet and took cholesterol-lowering medications. The other group just used medications. The researchers again used advanced imaging techniques to calculate the total plaque volume in certain sections of the patient's arteries. They checked at the beginning of the study and again after about one year. So in the medication-only group, the volume of the plaque increased just slightly, but there was no significant change in the medication and the diet group. And critically, when looking specifically at non-calcified plaque, which is softer and poses a greater risk, the reduction was greater. It dropped by 1.7% in the diet group and 0.7% in the medication-only group. So based on the evidence of these studies, we can see several clues about the best diet Diet to reduce plaque volume in our arteries. And I'm going to summarize what that diet looks like in a moment, but first I do want to add one more piece of evidence that will help us with our confidence in our conclusions. We know from an abundance of research that LDL cholesterol in the blood is linked to plaque buildup in our arteries. So for instance, one meta-analysis that included 31 studies found that treatments that lowered LDL cholesterol significantly lowered plaque volume. And from the PISA study, we can see that plaque begins to develop if the LDL cholesterol in our blood is above 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, and it becomes more severe the higher that level goes. Now note the numbers on the left hand side of this chart are very small. That's because it's rare for adults to have cholesterol levels this low without using medications. So it's possible that blockages could still develop at that level, we just don't have enough data to say. There's even a suggestion in the literature that the ideal level of LDL cholesterol is the level that was present at birth, so between 20 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. But the pattern is clear when we get to ranges that are more common. The more LDL cholesterol in our blood equals more plaque in our arteries. So we know that lowering LDL cholesterol lowers arterial plaque, and that means that a diet that lowers LDL cholesterol should help to reduce plaque. So what kind of diet does that? Well, we know which diet doesn't do it. If we have a diet that's high in saturated fats, it's going to raise our LDL cholesterol. But there's a certain diet pattern that led to a 9.2% reduction in LDL cholesterol in one study after just eight weeks. The study involved three groups with three different diets. One group ate the typical American diet, Group 2 ate a diet that's higher in fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and lower in sweets. And Group 3 ate fruit, vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy, and avoided red meat, sweets, and saturated fats. Well, can you guess which diet powered the reduction in LDL cholesterol the most? Well, if you've been following the video to this point, I'm sure you'll know that it was the third one. You'll also notice that it sounds a lot like the DASH diet, which is exactly what it was. So is the DASH diet the best way to reverse plaque in our arteries? Well, not exactly. Let's summarize what we've seen in the studies that we've looked at and draw some conclusions about the best diet to eat for our health. This part is so important and I hope you'll consider sharing it with your friends and family. 
Let's start with fat. The first two studies used a version of a low-fat diet as the intervention, and as we saw, this did seem to reduce arterial plaque. But the diets that helped reduce plaque in the later studies were definitely not low-fat. One study even had the intervention group eat a Mediterranean diet with 35% of their calories from fat, and this study even used a low-fat diet as the control. So what's going on here? Well, several decades ago, it was observed that low-fat diets seemed to reduce heart disease. So it was this type of diet that was recommended for years. But what we've found is that fat isn't necessarily bad for our health. It's saturated fat and trans fats that we want to avoid. But monounsaturated fats found in products like extra virgin olive oil actually seem to be helpful. So that's the first conclusion. We want a diet that's rich in healthy fats and low in saturated and trans fats. What we also notice is that studies in the intervention diets tend to include lots of fiber. They included foods that were rich in fruits, legumes, nuts, and vegetables. And we have compelling evidence from other studies that fiber intake helps to reduce LDL cholesterol. And we've seen that that in turn helps to reduce plaque. So we want our diet to prioritize fiber unless you've got specific medical conditions conditions, like irritable bowel syndrome, where certain types of fiber can actually make those symptoms worse. The diets that were used in the more recent studies also avoided sweets, whether in the form of sugary drinks or desserts. Here again we've got independent evidence that added sugar increases our risks of heart disease. A large observational study found that the greater share of calories from sugar in a diet, the higher the risk of heart disease. Then there's protein. The Mediterranean and DASH diets used in the studies that we've gone through included between 15 and 18% of the calories from protein. Now that's a moderately high amount of protein intake. For reference, eating the recommended daily allowance is usually around 10% of calories from protein. So is higher protein intake a good idea? Well, I've got a longer video on this topic that I'll put in the pinned comment, but the short answer is yes, only if done correctly. There are two reasons for this. The first is that we need protein to maintain muscle, which is especially important as we age. The second is that studies show that increased protein intake can also help to lower our cardiovascular risk, but there's a catch. A very interesting study just came out that looked at the relative risks of heart disease in relation to the amount and types of protein consumed. It was a large observational study spanning 30 years. The study's authors found two intriguing results. First is that getting higher proportions of protein from plant sources reduced risks of plaque clogging up our arteries that supply the blood to the heart. Those who ate the most plant protein had a 27% lower risk than those who ate the least. Secondly, those with the highest intake of protein and the highest proportion of that protein from plant sources had the lowest risks overall. It was a massive 46% lower risk than those who ate the least amount of protein and had the lowest amount of plant sources. So here's the lesson. We should be getting plenty of protein, but the source matters. We want to prioritize plant-based sources, again, unless you've got things like irritable bowel syndrome. Not because of the different proteins between animals and plants, but because of what else comes with plant-based protein, which is fiber. And we've already gone through in detail why high fiber is important. Now, this doesn't mean no animal proteins, but we should be especially careful about sources that include saturated fats, like fatty cuts of red meat and processed meats. There's one final thing to point out about the Mediterranean and DASH diets that were used in the studies. They naturally include many foods rich in potassium. These include things like beans, leafy greens, peas, beets, and many other vegetables, as well as low-fat dairy. So why is this important? Well, getting adequate potassium helps to lower our blood pressure, which is another key risk factor for heart health. This is why I included potassium in microvitamin, but just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. So let's try and draw all of this together. What does the evidence tell us about the best way to eat for our heart health? We should avoid saturated fats. We should get plenty of fiber from fresh fruits, vegetables, and nuts. We should avoid sugar and sweet drinks and get plenty of protein, choosing lean and plant sources. The Mediterranean and DASH diets are two ways to eat like this, but they aren't the only ones. The beauty of these principles is that they're very simple and can be adapted to many different types of cuisine. 
If we follow these guidelines consistently, we can maximize our chances of avoiding risky buildup of plaque in our arteries. Now, diet is just one tool that we have to fight against plaque. However, exercise has also been shown to have a massive impact. In fact, recent studies have allowed us to pinpoint the exact type of exercise with the largest effect, and you won't believe how easy it is to do. So make sure to check out this next video here to learn all of the details.